The Enfield Poltergeist was a claim of supernatural activity at 284 Green Street, a council house in Brimstone. Enfield in London, England between 1977 and 1979. The alleged poltergeist activity centered around sisters Janet and Margaret Hodgson. Some members of the Society for Psychical Research, such as inventor Morris Gross and writer Guy Lyon Playfair, believed the haunting to be genuine, while others such as Anita Gregory and John Beloff were unconvinced and found evidence the girls had faked incidents for the benefit of journalists. Members of the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of Claims of the Paranormal including stage magicians such as Melbourne Christopher and Joe Nickel criticized paranormal investigators for being credulous whilst also identifying elements of the case as being indicative of a hoax. The story attracted press coverage in British newspapers, has been mentioned in books, featured in television and radio documentaries, and dramatized in the 2016 horror film The Conjuring 2. In August 1977, single parent Peggy Hodgson called the Metropolitan Police to her rented home at 284 Green Street in Enfield, London claiming she had witnessed furniture moving and that two of her four children had heard knocking sound on the walls. The children including Margaret who was 13 and Janet who was 11. A woman police constable reported witnessing a chair wobble and slide but could not determine the cause of the movement. Later claims included disembodied voices, loud noises, thrown toys, overturned chairs, and children levitating. Over a period of 18 months, more than 30 people, including the Hodgson's neighbor, psychic researchers, and journalists, said they variously saw heavy furniture moving of its own accord, objects being thrown across a room and the sisters seeming to levitate several feet off the ground. Many also heard and recorded knocking noises in a gruff voice. The story was regularly covered in the Daily Mirror newspaper until reports came to an end in 1979. Society for Psychical Research members Morris Gross and Guy Lyron Playfair reported curious whistling and barking noises coming from Janet's general direction. Although Playfair maintained the haunting was genuine and wrote in his later book The House is Haunted, the true story of a poltergeist and that an entity was to blame for the Enfield disturbances, he often doubted the children's veracity and wondered if they were playing tricks and exaggerating. Still, Gross and Playfair believed that even though that some of the poltergeist activity was faked by the girls, other incidents were genuine. Other paranormal investigators who studied the case included American demonologists Ed and Lorraine Warren, who visited the Enfield House in 1978 and were convinced that the events had a supernatural explanation. Janet was detected in trickery. A video camera in an adjoining room caught her bending spoons and attempting to bend an iron bar. Gross had observed Janet banging a broom handle on the ceiling and hiding his tape recorder. According to Playfair, one of Janet's voices she called Bill displayed a habit of suddenly changing topic. It was a habit Janet also had. When Janet and Margaret admitted pranking to journalists, Gross and Playfair compelled the girls to retract their confession. The two men mocked by other researchers for being easily duped. The psychical researcher Renee Hayes had noted that her doubts were raised about the alleged poltergeist voice at the SPR conference at Cambridge in 1978, where video cassettes from Enfield were examined. SPR investigator Anita Gregory stated the Enfield case had been overrated, characterizing several episodes of the girls' behavior as suspicious and speculated that the girls had staged some incidents for the benefit of journalists seeking a sensational story. John Beloff, a former president of the SPR investigated and suggested that Janet was practicing ventriloquism. Both Beloff and Gregory came to the conclusion that Janet and Margaret were playing tricks on the investigators. Milborn Christopher, an American stage magician, briefly investigated the Enfield occurrences and failed to observe anything that could be called paranormal. He was dismayed by what he felt was suspicious activity on the part of Janet, later concluding that the poltergeist was nothing more than the antics of a little girl who wanted to cause trouble and who was very, very clever. Ventriloquist Ray Allen visited the house and concluded that Janet's male voice were simply a vocal trick. Skeptics had argued that the alleged poltergeist voice that originated from Janet was produced by false vocal cords above the larynx and had the phraseology and vocabulary of a child. In a television interview for BBC Scotland, Janet was observed to gain attention by waving her hand, and then putting her hand in front of her mouth while a claimed disembodied voice was heard. During the interview, both girls were asked the question how does it feel to be haunted by a poltergeist? Janet replied, it's not haunted, and Margaret, in a hushed tone, interrupted, shut up. These factors have been regarded by skeptics as evidence against the case. As a magician experienced the dynamics of trickery, 
Nickel examined Playfair's account as well as contemporary press clippings. He noted that the supposed poltergeist tended to act only when it was not being watched and concluded that the incidents were best explained as children's pranks. Although Gross made tape recordings of Janet and believed no trickery was involved, the magician Bob Cowdy said, He made some of the recordings available to me and, having listened to them very carefully, I came to the conclusion that there was nothing in what I heard that was beyond the capabilities of an imaginative teenager. All of the recordings have been catalogued and digitalized by the Society for Psychical Research and a book on their content was produced by Dr. Melvin Willen in 2019. A 2016 article by psychology professor Chris French in Time Out magazine described five reasons why he believed the case to have a hoax. His reasons are the two sisters involved admitting hoaxing some of the activity. The photo of Janet levitating above her bed could just as easily be explained as Janet jumping. The spirit of an old man who supposedly possessed Janet took on great deal of interest in menstruation. Eyewitnesses are notoriously unreliable, and other schoolgirl pranks before and after have gotten out of hand. 